Hi, this is Shadi. Today's presentation is about Uchimata and its little details and various variations and entries. So it's a very detailed presentation. So please pay attention to the very end. It is a throw that beloved by everyone and it has evolved tremendously over the years to the point where we have blurred the lines between uh, sections of techniques. So for example, now we debate whether it is a hip technique or a leg technique, depending on the variation, much like kata guruma, uh, I should say, is it a sacrificing throw or is it a hand technique? Again, all depends on competition and the need for it. Now, in order to understand its evolution, we need to go back to the very old variation from the 1880s. So this is the traditional form that was initially drawn out. You see, you draw big circles and as they are coming into you from the back, you lift your leg and then you only use the back of your thigh to reap their inner thigh. So initially a leg technique. Here they are showing you that you don't pull with the hand, you just move them around and uh, you get the, the throw. So here they do something interesting and they say, which is something we see in competition, they say don't lift onto your hips because this would be considered hanegoshi. And I found that very interesting. So any involvement of the hips would be hanegoshi. It's not the form of the bent leg, etc. Now, notice something because a lot of people say it simply does not work. This is too ceremonial. It's too beautiful. It does not work. But personally, I think it is misunderstood for a very particular reason. And that is look at the supporting foot. It goes away and then it comes back slightly before he reaps the thigh. And that is crucial. Now, let's take a look at old writings and what they say. So we go back to the 1910s into the uh, Iguchi book. And we see this looks a lot like what you see in Nage no Kata. It is called uh, Uchimata Nage uh, in this book. So you see it's on the side. You see there is a contact with the side of the hip, but there is no lift with the side of the hip. It's only the thigh that's doing the work and lifting deep into the inner thigh, hence creating that big lift. So the closer to the crotch, the bigger the lift. Of course, there's the centrifuge uh, movement. Now, the description is on the right because Japanese goes from uh, right to left. So uh, I'm not gonna go word for word for time's sake, but they say something about moving all four limbs. But uh, what really struck me is that pulling uh, diagonally to your side and then putting or your foot or stepping outward and then reaping away. So very much like what you would uh, describe a, a traditional form or the kata uh, form of uchi mata. And so they believe that this is the variation. Now here you see this next one. It It's a big o uchi gari and a ken ken uchi mata called o uchi mata. It's a different technique. Now, did someone cover this? Absolutely. Um, in Neil Adams' ultimate study, I will link it below, he actually goes over the traditional Ashi style and talks about moving outward and about the support foot. At first, when he explained it, it did not make sense to me at all. I was like, why would you step out and then bring back your foot to use it as a support foot? It makes uh, no sense. But if you think about it, here he's doing big movements, but in order to show what he's talking about, um, the stepping out, it allows to create a centrifuge as you are pulling because you have your weight shifting. And so it creates that pull on both sides. And so bringing them around you becomes much easier. Now, here's the key though. The foot that steps out, it does not actually land the full weight on it. You actually uh, take it out maybe here. This is an example where I do it just to show you that I know what I'm talking about. I have felt it. Um, so here I pull and I lift. Notice it is the same image that we saw in the book. You have the side of the hip making contact, but not the lift. The lift is done solely by the thigh and I'm pulling diagonally into me directly. I'm not doing these big circles uh, like uh, kata form. So again, 
look at the photo same on the side you can see the hips are fully exposed and it's only the thigh that is making contact so let's take a look at the supporting foot so i step out i don't put my weight fully on it so i can actually bring it back i create the rotation that i want with the centrifuge and i lift smoothly now let's take a look at an actual pro doing it not someone like me here is okada doing it flawlessly so if you see he steps out diagonally and pulls diagonally uh, not necessarily a big circle it's a diagonal pull almost like you're flexing your bicep but it's a diagonal pull um, so he pulls and then he gets um, the side close and stuck to him to his side now here it's a pull to the back and diagonal as you are stepping uh, also parallel and diagonal to the outside before you bring back your support foot and then reap the thigh now let's compare it to today's kuzushi or what we are taught you have this big pull like this and they tell you to look at your watch with the sleeve hand so it's a pull towards you and almost sideways exact different from what he is doing here so to the back diagonal and then you flex your bicep so he's explaining similar concept as you are bringing them around you now let's take a look at the throw it is insane so he steps outside uh, pulls diagonally to his shoulder or to his side and then he shoot his leg to outside and then brings it back so here look it 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 you don't notice it unless i tell you you see look at the supporting foot he takes it out slightly so he can get a smoother pull and then brings it back quickly he doesn't post his weight on it in order to be close enough so he can reap you don't want to be too far and you don't want to be too close at the same time it is absolute perfection and i do think that this little detail here whether it is the pull or the supporting foot both being misunderstood and hence we now deviate to a lot of these you know striking with the hips as you see here you do not move them around you you just go into them and just blasting them with your hips and your leg upward great example is the great e no way now let's talk about the hanegoshi uh idea now you have to understand that in japan it is not just kodokan um, for example i have a kodokan card and an all japan card kodokan to the japanese is mostly to go and get your grades uh, but for them this they call it uchimata you've seen countless tutorials by this point by uh, olympic champions teaching this variation and a lot of people debate it's hanegoshi well for starters starters this will teach you how to position yourself properly create the unbalancing you need and as you lift with the hips and the leg bent this way you actually tend to have a bigger lift of course and also you protect your partner's groin but in randori you shoot the leg in between but the hips are definitely involved now this variation that i talked about is so unique the old variation that it featured a mini documentary on kamikawa talking about his very unique uchimata talking about here you see on the left uh, most athletes lift this way and then you see them doing this while his uchimata is actually bringing them diagonally to the side and then stepping out and then bringing the leg back and lifting only with the th thigh making uh, a contact with the side of the hip only so as you see it is definitely something that is rare and i do feel it's misunderstood now that's not to say that today's entry the way we do it or the hanegoshi entry is only a hip technique of course not here you see maruyama taps the inside of the foot and then lifts it keeps his hips on all on the outside watch you can see he does not need to go fully on the center you actually do not need to do that but the entry is a hanegoshi entry but uh, sticking only to the side thigh now here fluid judo japan uh, my teacher um, you see he does these pulls but he only taps the leg and then once they remove that weight on it once you tap it like this it's easy to backstep and then lift it 
and of course the hands will do a lot of work and so it does not necessarily have to be a uh, hip throw but you see now we have merged all these things and we have all these variations but i do feel that the misunderstood kata has a lot of hidden gem that can help us even uh, till this day so um, i hope you enjoyed this presentation if you have anything to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening